There's an old adage, history is written by the victors. But what happens when there is no victor? Who then writes the history, especially when the movers and shakers, a third party, wants to remain anonymous? It has been said that to understand the modern day mafia, one must first understand the Castella Merisi War of the early 1930s. The Castella Merisi War took place in New York City between two rival mafia factions. This was a time before the modern day five families and before the Italian phrase Cosa Nostra was applied to the Borgatas and their business. On one side stood Joe the Boss Mazzurio, and on the other, Salvatore Maranzano. According to crime historian J. Robert Nash, Maranzano started the war against Joe the Boss for honor's sake. Maranzano was from Castella Marie in Sicily, an extremely remote area. Mazzaria considered the inhabitants of this area of Sicily as country bumpkins, hinterland primitives, incapable of ever assuming responsible roles in the organization's hierarchy. Others, like Castel Marie native Joseph Bonanno, who sided with Maranzano, explained that they just wanted to be left alone. They didn't like or appreciate interference by Mazzaria. They believed they had a right to operate their family as they saw fit without interference from others. And Joe the boss, well, he wanted to be the boss of everyone. Bonanno speaks of Maranzano as a gentleman's gentleman. He was educated, cultured, an avid reader, and even spoke some Latin. For a time, he considered and even began studying for the priesthood. Maranzano was, by all accounts, nothing like the fictional character portrayed in the 1991 Hollywood blockbuster, Mobsters, which starred Christian Slater and Patrick Dempsey. In fact, if you paid close attention, the writers changed the name of Joe the Boss's nemesis, calling him not Salvatore Maranzano, but Salvatore Faranzano. Mazzaria may have been the quintessential opposite of Maranzano. This is not to say that the real Maranzano was not mafioso. On the contrary, he waged war against Mazzaria's forces and had many of his men killed. Joe the Boss, according to Carl Syphakis, in his book, Mafia Encyclopedia, led an attack on the Morello Borgata in 1913, killing his own cousin. And then six months later, he killed another cousin in the exact same spot. In the movie Mobsters, it was a nephew of Joe the Boss who was killed on his orders. Maranzano and the other mafioso from Castella Marie grew weary of Joe the Boss and his lust for control. Carl Syphakis explains, Joe the Boss was a glutton in personal habits as well as administration of criminal activities. He demanded that other mafioso pay him enormous tribute. Maranzano cultivated the resentment this stirred up in Mazzaria's sub-chiefs, and he worked on winning defections by promising a fair division of the loot. In 1928, when peace could not be reached, the two factions put their hands to their guns and the shooting began. Between the years 1928 to 1930, it was estimated by the New York police that the death toll in the Castella Marisi War was greater than 50 men. Tired of the war and viewing it as unprofitable, Mazzaria's lieutenants, Charles Lucky Luciano, Frank Costello, Vito Genovese, and others conspired to have their boss, Mazzaria, killed. They then sought peace with Maranzano. It was Maranzano who gave structure to the current organization in New York, known as the Five Families. And it was Maranzano who first coined the phrase Cosa Nostra, meaning our thing. Please note that this phrase was only applied to the New York Borgatas. It was not used by other families throughout the country. For example, Chicago simply referred to themselves 
as the outfit. The original five families as set up by Maranzano included Charles Lucky Luciano, Thomas Gagliano, Joseph Prefacci, Frank Scalisi, and Joseph Bonanno. Though Bonanno never heard Maranzano call himself the boss of bosses, many, even a few inside his own family, believed this was his intention. In their view, they had simply traded one tyrant for another. What was well known is that Marazzano did not trust the new alliance, and therefore he put a contract on Luciano, Costello, Genovese, Joey Adonis, Willie Moretti, Dutch Schultz, and Al Capone, and that he had hired Vincent Mad Dog Cole to take them out. Ironically, the tip-off to Luciano came from a Maranzano man, Thomas Three Finger Brown Lucchese, who had secretly backed the plan of a new commission. A plan conceived not in the mind of Charles Luciano, but in the brilliant foresight of Johnny Torrio, one-time partner with Al Capone. With this information, Luciano struck first, hitting Maranzano. He arranged for Samuel Red Levine and three other gangsters provided by Meyer Lansky to go to Marazzano's office on September 10, 1931, posing as accountants and taxmen. Once inside his office on the ninth floor of the Helmsley building, they disarmed Maranzano's guards. The four men then shot and stabbed Salvatore Marazzano to death. As they fled down the stairs, they came face to face with Vincent Mad Dog Cole on his way up for a scheduled appointment that he had had with Maranzano. They warned him that there had been a raid and he fled the scene. Bonanno and more than likely Profacci were not happy about this turn of events. Bonanno wrote in his book, Honor Thy Father, if told to fight to vindicate Maranzano, the men in my family would have fought. But what good would it have done to fight Luciano? He had claimed self-defense in the killing of Maranzano. Bonanno had previously explained that Maranzano was behaving unusually after the death of Mazaria. Now he, that is to say Luciano, mainly wanted to be left alone to run his enterprises. He was not trying to impose himself on us as Mazaria had done. Lucky demanded nothing from us. After the death of Maranzano, there was a change in one of the families, the one headed up by Frank Scalisi. He may have been the Luca Brasi of his day. Not even Joe Bonanno could call off Frank Scalisi. He had been a strong supporter of Maranzano, and the emerging new commission, for one reason or another, considered him to be a liability. Scalisi was forced to retire by Luciano and replaced by Vincent Mangano. It should be noted that the commission was not an all Sicilian organization, nor were New York's rackets divided up only amongst the five families. Dutch Schultz, a German Jew, owned a large slice of the pie. He was, by all accounts, the most powerful single member of the commission. Other non-Sicilians also had a voice and a vote on the commission board. A short list includes Meyer Lansky, Louis Lepke Bacalter, and Abner Longy Zwilman. Throughout the country, others, such as the Neapolitan Al Capone, was a member of the commission. And it should be noted that contrary to popular opinion, Capone was not mafia. Mafioso came from Sicily, and Capone's roots were in Naples. The five families were set up as a way of keeping the peace within the Sicilian Mafia ranks. During the 1940s and 50s, the five families began ruling the whole of the commission. Hence the term Mafia, though originally only used for and by Sicilians, became a slang term for all organized crime. <laughs>